Well, I'm uh, Pavel Kropa, I'm a, a professor at Bonn University and at Charles University in Prague. Uh, we're working on astrophysical uh, research problems. Dark matter is one of the central pillars of the standard model of cosmology. Which are the critical aspects of this paradigm of the dark matter? Well, the critical aspects, well, so the hypothesis that dark matter exists is a reasonable physical hypothesis because we see deviations from how stars and gas move in galaxies. Uh, if we want to keep the gravitational theory developed by Newton and Einstein, we need to add dark matter as an additional gravitational glue to keep the stars and gas together in a galaxy. Um, so that's a reasonable hypothesis. Um, the uh, problem um, encountered in, um, in real uh, research life, in g given the data, is that the evidence for dark matter is not there. Put it put, put differently, we have tested for the existence of the dark matter with various scientific methods, and we have shown that it cannot exist. Um, because um, what is referred to as Chandra Sekhar dynamical friction is not detected. And this is very similar to when you take a glass of honey and let a ball fall into the honey, the ball will slow down in the honey and slowly sink to the center. This is friction. And the dark matter halo has a similar effect. A galaxy falling into the dark matter halo of another galaxy will slow down and sink to the center um, and this slowdown is not seen in the data. Could you briefly explain what are the alternative approaches to these issues based on uh, MOND theories? Yes, yes. So um, given that um, many such tests, many based on Chandrasekhar dynamical friction, have shown that dark matter cannot exist. We've also done other tests uh, looking at more indirect ways of detecting or finding dark matter in the astronomical data. Um, it means that uh, one has to change the law of gravitation, which means that uh, Isaac Newton and Einstein um, got it wrong in the sense that um, later physicists and astronomers have extended their uh, law, which, which was found by Isaac Newton initially, by, uh, to, to by orders of magnitude to the scales of galaxies in the whole universe. And this extrapolation breaks down and we therefore have to look at different laws of gravitation. We have tested a number of such suggestions by various people. All have been falsified rigorously um, and the only one which um, survives is that of Milgram, which he published in 1983, which is referred to as MOND, Modified Newtonian Dynamics or Milgromian Dynamics. Milgromian Dynamics is a generalization of uh, the Newtonian laws uh, of gravitation by using a, what is referred to as a um, a different uh, differential operator uh, acting on calculating um, on, on the field which sources the gravitation uh, given the observed matter distribution. It was a bit complicated maybe. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and so uh, a mond is a nonlinear theory of gravitation. It is much richer in its phenomena and uh, therefore it, is, it, it can be not very beautifully tested with the data because we can look at the various predictions made by mond, which um, are not, which a um, mond um, is different from Newtonian gravitation because it allows particular phenomena which uh, are unique to mond to be found and they are, they are therefore predicted. Um, and, uh, and all such predictions by the theory, which have been calculated already a long time ago actually, have been, have been verified. So we have so far, um, all the tests we've been doing have not been possible to falsify uh, MOND um, given the observation data we have today. So it is the only known theory of gravitation uh, that, at least that I know of, which actually passes all tests and where all our uh, attempts to falsify it have failed. In your opinion, why do the most of scientists believe in a dark matter paradigm? 
Well, that's a, a fascinating uh, a question, which uh, goes into uh, the direction of sociology and the philosophy of history of physics. How do paradigm changes occur? At which point does, does the scientific community decide that one has to discard what has been known and uh, turn to new avenues of understanding? Uh, and in this case, um, it is true that um, the, the original um, suggestion was published in 1983 by Milgram, who, who was among the first to study the dynamics of systems beyond the solar system <coughs> in, in detail, <coughs> given the available data on galaxies, uh, which became available in the late, late 1970s. And his uh, suggestions have been largely this, this um, discounted. Um, um, and uh, I've, I've myself experienced this um, keenly um, at the university I work at, but also uh, worldwide, worldwide, where uh, researchers who work on galaxies and cosmology uh, look down upon uh, researchers who have been working on moons. Uh, that is, is some, some psychological effect I do not understand as a scientist, because as a scientist I'm interested in all possible uh, hypotheses which are put up and then we have to test these hypotheses and I, I don't attach feelings to a particular hypothesis. Uh, and so the, um, the um, reaction of the community to the suggestions of, of Milgram are uh, unscientific. And um, in, in what I've been observing in the literature in terms of how research papers are written or publications are written, um, it is uh, they are there's always a, a tent towards uh, putting down Mond, not even mentioning Mond, maybe even though a prediction has been verified and always trying to um, explain the phenomena with dark matter even in the even in cases where one really has to uh, do very strange things with dark matter to make that apparent explanation to the point of view where I think that those people who do those sort of research publications discredit their reputation and now um, that this is a, it's a mass phenomena the whole scientific or large fraction of the scientific com community is has been rejecting Mond which means that uh, the researchers who do work on Mont have a very difficult time. Many stop research because they have to leave research because they do not get funding, they do not get a second postdoc or next postdoc, postdoctoral position. For example, nearly all my grant uh, applications have, have been rejected um, because um, by having a reputation now in the community that I'm doing Mont, um, it implies that I'm a in a lesser scientist, I guess. This is at least my impression of how I see uh, scientists uh, react. And uh, this is uh, hindering the progress very significantly because we are now um, in, because um, we are now um, doing uh, research in, um, on, on cosmological problems and we can see that the um, that calculations based on Mond are very much like what the real universe is actually uh, doing. So basically all the phenomena predicted by Mond and calculated with Mond seem to be evident in the data down to how star clusters evolve. What is the reaction from the scientific community to this non-standard model? And uh, is there a stronger opposition from the community of the theoretical physicists or from astrophysicists? That's a, that's a very interesting question. So I'm in, I've changed institutes in Bonn away from astronomy to the physicists who um, there are sort of two, two types of physicists. The particle physicists, many of them have started to um, be strongly convinced dark matter exists because the astronomers tell them this um, convincing evidence for dark matter, which, which is wrong, but that's what is being portrayed these days. Um, but then there are uh, physicists more dealing with uh, the properties of matter, um, how, how with quantum field theory largely, so those are really physicists who are looking at uh, um, uh, hardcore um, theory, um, trying to understand how proton is um, generated from the vacuum and the vacuum fluctuations. 
and and those are the people I've joined um, in uh, in Bonn, um, and they are uh, apparently very uh, much more open-minded. They uh, seem to be okay with needing to change the law of gravitation. They understand the fact that. Uh, uh, Newton's work uh, was based on solar system data rather than galaxies and so um, it, it's likely to break down on the scale of galaxies as well as uh, uh, the whole universe. Uh, so uh, it seems that those theoretical physicists are more, more open-minded than the particle physicists who um, base part of their existence on trying to find uh, these dark matter particles which actually don't exist as we've shown in, in countless research publications now.